Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual. I don't have anything on my screen, it's just going to be me talking about some things that you need to know. I am going to post a lot of links and a lot of alternative sources in a module on iLearn, so make sure you're looking for those. This particular topic, Swing uh, GUI Library, is going to require a little bit more self-learning than other topics in this course have required. And part of the reason for that is because there's just a lot you can do with GUIs, and I want you to explore and interact with a lot of different types of code and pieces of code. And the best way to do that is really just to provide you with the examples and let you look through how it interacts and functions. I will post a couple videos from YouTube that really go into particular components really well and explain how they work. Uh, but generally speaking, we're just going to go over some terminology here and get you an overview of the things that you need to know and understand. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is Swing? Well, Swing is a GUI library that is built on top of AWT for Java. So AWT uh, is an older GUI kit that was used a lot in Java and it was replaced with Swing, which is a little bit more modern. Swing is sometimes considered a little bit out of date, but it's still very common to use within a Java framework. So the first thing that you really need to understand about how to use Swing is that you have a window or a top level container where you put all of your GUI stuff inside of. Now, this is going to be very familiar to any other kind of window that we talk about in our desktop environments on our computers. So if you think about your web browser, for instance, or maybe your code editor, it exists inside of what we call a window. We can build windows similar to these in Java. Now they're gonna look really ugly until you get really, really good at using these things, which is fine. We're not worried about making them look super pretty. Uh, but essentially it's our dialog box or a frame, uh, sometimes called the top level container, as I just called it a little bit ago. And this is basically where we store all of our components. And I'll talk about what a component is in a minute because components are particular things within the Swing framework. Next, you're gonna need a container. Now this is gonna host uh, all of the components within that window. So the window has the X button, for instance, on your program. And the container is gonna host components within the what we call the drawable space of that window. So it's just a way for us to organize the things that we're gonna put onto our window. We sometimes call this a panel or a box, and you're gonna have probably a few of these that you're gonna move around different components with in your application, in your GUI application, and that's fine. Uh, the next thing you're gonna to need to know is you're gonna to need to understand what a component is. Now a component is sometimes called a GUI widget. This is things such as a button, checkbox, combo box, list, menu, radio button, slider, spinner, text field, or password. These are basically all of the things where a user might interact with your application through that GUI interface. So this is things that you can click, you can drag, you can look through, you can right click to open up in the case of like a menu. Um, it's all kinds of things of that sort that you're gonna actually interact with directly with mouse clicks on your end. Now, there's other things that you're going to need to know about these, such as how to change certain properties or fields. This includes backgrounds, borders, and whether or not they're enabled. If they're enabled, you can use them. If they're disabled, you can't, which is really useful to be able to flick on and off depending on what you're doing within your GUI framework. Now, all components are technically also containers. Uh, that's just a little bit about how the abstraction within the Swing library actually works. Uh, but you're probably going to also put them inside of another container that is just a container. Usually it's going to be a J panel. Most of the terms regarding the components, the containers, the windows, all these different types of things, they usually start with the letter J. So we have J panel, J button, J checkbox, uh, J list, all these kind of things. Uh, don't be thrown by that. It's just how they decided to use the naming conventions. Now, even though we have a lot of buttons and combo boxes and lists and all kinds of things that we can interact with in our GUI, you're going to need something called an event listener. Now, an event listener is a 
thing we add on to different components of our GUI so that when somebody clicks on it, our application knows how to respond. This is particularly important for things that are mouse clicks, button clicks. Uh, if you're wanting to listen for certain keys being clicked on the keyboard, that's going to be important as well. Uh, this is very useful, by the way, if you ever want to do any kind of game design. All this GUI stuff is very translatable to other types of languages and other types of GUI frameworks. So even though you might not work specifically with this setup, with this kind of abstraction that Java is expecting, the things such as event listeners and the fact that there is structure and different ways to interact with your application is something you should be very interested in if you're looking to go into either game development or web development in particular, since these are really common parts of GUI applications. These are something that you're probably going to do at some point or another. Now, again, I am going to post a lot of links with examples. Each example will have some code so you can see how it works and how you can interact with it. And it's really important that you go through these examples and analyze how they work, compile them yourself, run them, look at the code, and try to mess around with them a little bit to do something different. Now, Lab 9 is going to be using GUIs. You're going to have to make a, essentially a calculator with a GUI framework in your next lab. So it's important that you understand these things before you get there, which is why it's really, really important that you do this exploration and do this work to get ahead of the curve on the swing stuff, because it is a lot to go through. And it's really hard to explain it in this format. So I really want you to make sure you're asking questions and engaging with this content ahead of time. Now, the last thing that I'm going to mention here um, is a layout manager. Layout managers are a way for us to decide how things will be displayed on your screen, on your window that you create. And it's important that you understand how they work. Uh, there's lots of different types of layout managers. And again, I'm going to post examples for these um, on the module on, on a what I'm going to create a page that has a lot of links and references to different things. So make sure that you are going through those, reading those and finding those examples. Also, make sure you watch those YouTube videos that I post. I am going to post a few of them that I think are very useful, as well as a really long one. It's like four hours long. It's something really, really long, longer than we can cover in uh, normal content for this course. But it goes through each of the, the different components that are really helpful. So I'll post that, but I'll only ask you to watch particular sections out of that video. Um, the others are more for your benefit than for uh, the course content explicitly. Remember, if you have any questions, you need to reach out to me on Teams, preferably. If for some reason Teams isn't working for you, you can always email me and you can schedule office hours using that web link I gave you on the syllabus.